И е време за нашег... За нашег прво госта вечера с... Обечал съм в овој години ствари на кои не сте навикли да гледате. Овој човек е дошол не затоа што има неки специјални разлог, него само да би био гост. У наша мисија у питање е Джон Чарлис, познати као Бојси и серија Мучки. Джон Чарлис. That's pretty much everything that we wanted from you tonight. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Yeah. You're so kind. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, please come. Please come. You're uh, coming from England and bringing us the explanation of my moustaches. Yes. Um, it, you, how long have you been growing that? Actually, I'm drawing them. I'm not, yeah. I'm not growing them, I'm drawing them, you know. Because this just happened overnight, you know. I just woke up one morning and there it was. And, oh, uh, yeah? It's been there ever since. Terrible show. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. We've talked about it for a month and a half for this episode. Boys are in the chat and I'm going to talk to you after this episode. Do you know? Thank you. Do you know what I said? I don't understand a word you're saying, but you're obviously a very funny man. I'm trying, you know. But why don't you speak English? Hey? No, I just told them that I will shave my moustache tomorrow. Oh, see? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. I just take mine off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there. <laughs> Anyhow, welcome to my show. It's a great honor to have you here. Uh, when we invited you, it was, uh, we, we had a small fear if you will say yes, and then uh, now we have no fears because we see that you're a very cool guy. Yeah. Not only because you said yes, you came here and you're very funny, but actually you told me that you didn't come because of the show. You came only because your hobby is traveling. <laughs> <laughs> My hobby is travelling, yes. I'd never been to this part of the world before, um, particularly not to Serbia, not to any part of this. A lot of people in England don't even know where Serbia is, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't put a finger on it in the map. But I, mean, I, can, I, can, I can tell you, you have something like 20 pilots that yeah. knows exactly where the Serbia is. Yeah? Yeah. Will they fly everything? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a different story, don't worry. <laughs> No, it's, it's, a great, it's a great part of uh, my life. My, my wife and I, we do a lot of cruising. We go to a lot of, uh, a lot of different places. And uh, I think this is fascinating, you know. My first time, uh, I was very lucky to have a very good guide today. And we saw a lot of... Um, and um, it, was, it was very interesting, you know. Um, I have to say the history, the history, the, a great... I love history and, uh, and the story of it all. But you had yeah. an interesting travel. It was to the Paris and then from the Paris to Belvedere and then there was a delay of two hours and then they lost your luggage. That's right, yes. This was Lufthansa lost my luggage. Lufthansa lost his yeah, luggage. Yeah. It was the Germans, you know, but... <coughs> what can you get to blame them for everything, you know? No. <laughs> no, but you know what happens? When a German guy hears that the British guy is coming to a Serbian guy, something must happen, you know? Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's how it goes. You know? Okay. That's yeah. how it goes. Yeah. Okay, so generally you like Belgrade. It's not so, such a bad place, huh? Ah, fantastic, yeah. And does Belgrade like you? What is your feeling? Well, you, you I have was... some fear that nobody will know who you are. No, no, no. I, I, I came out, I had no idea that it was, um, that it meant so much to people. I met a lot of people out in the squares today who come up and they say, can I have a photograph taken? You know, they say, can I have a photograph? I say, I've got a photograph of Tom Cruise. Yeah. You know, <laughs> will that do? It's a very nice look. I've got a present for you. Here is a photograph of me. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, it's very nice. But you didn't sign it. Can I show you to the camera? This, uh, the story of this photograph is it was taken uh, last week why you laugh? Huh? Um, this, this was just, uh, just before I came to Serbia, and this is what I look like after 24 hours in Serbia. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll show you, call you later. Yeah. <laughs>
You, you have to sign it for me. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, so... Tom Cruise. Let's, uh... <laughs> Actually, you look more like Pierce Brosnan. You know? <laughs> I say, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. very Pierce Brosnan is a nice guy. Yeah, you know? very I mean, nice. I mean yeah. Tom Cruise is like this, you know. Yeah. He's smaller than me, you know. And he's playing the tallest hero in yes. Top City, yes. yeah. Yes, yes. And do, do you know other problems that he has? I don't want to hear about it, no. Okay, <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay. Uh, you have uh, two books on your own. Yes. And uh, uh, those two books are not published in Serbia yet. No, no, I'm looking for a publisher in, um, in Serbia because I know how popular okay, the show is Okay, he's looking for a publisher. Is I'm there a publisher, a publisher in the hall? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, Barney, could you bring my books over here, please? Uh, how do you know his name? He told me. He told me to mention his name. These are my two. Judo. <laughs> Did he tell me his wrong name? No, no. He is Bunny. He is Bunny. These are the two books, ladies and gentlemen. This is my whole life story. Nice. That's, that's the first one being Boise, that's the second one, uh, Boise and beyond, and it's all for under £20. How many dinars is that? £20? It's something like two and a half thousand dinars. My whole life story for two and a half thousand dinars. <laughs> that is a very good deal. I shall be in the market in Belgrade with a suitcase and I shall be selling them in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, sure. there, for you. Yeah. And now, okay, can I speak Serbian a little bit? Hmm? Can I speak Serbian for ten seconds? Yes, of course. To call the publishers. Call the publishers. Dakle, u Gigo niko neštam pa u Srbiji pa ja pozivam se izdavače da se jave na broj... Uzem ali kažem broj telefona svoj, ne? Javite se na... Već se s Ivanom ne može tamo ludati šalje snimke. Na produkcija et prva tačka rs, Mira Đuričić će biti oduševljen na ovim što sam rekao. Ako želite da baš vi odštampate ovu knjigu na srpsko, molim se, javite se, pomognemo čoveku kad je već tu i kad je ovako dobar čovek. All I can say to you is Bulić. Bulić? Yeah. Bulić what? Yeah. Bulić twice. Or should I say another word? I am not saying another word. Okay, never mind. You don't have to. You got me this last time, last night. Yeah, yeah we were in a bilis mo restorano i ja ga naučim da kad. Okay. Very bad, very bad behavior. I yeah. almost said it. Yeah? Yeah, I almost, almost said it. Almost. Almost. I, I should be controlled. I should be focused. Okay, let's, let's focus. Okay. Okay, so these two books, I call the publishers to publish them. Yeah. And I really hope that they will do it. And uh, anyhow, uh, who wants to order them in English, uh, they can do it over the Amazon. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon yeah, yes. Yeah. You can you order it over Amazon, the internet, yeah. which is kind yeah, of cool. Yeah. If you know how to read English, because <laughs> I don't know. I can speak, but I cannot read, which is very common in Serbia. I think you're just as funny in English as you are in Polish. You think so? Yeah. You should hear me in... Is that what you're speaking here, Polish? Yeah? No, I was speaking Swahili. Ah, Swahili. Swahili is my, my, my mother tongue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's, uh, let's agree that the Boise, uh, Boise de uh, definitely is your trademark. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, something yeah. that uh, gave you all the colors and all the popularity that you have. Yeah. Comes from Only Fools and Horses, which is a TV show that was broadcasted for 31 years, if I'm right, yes? Yeah, but yes, 30th anniversary last year, yeah. 30th anniversary. 1981 it started, the, uh, the show started in 1981, yeah. Okay, before we start to speak about Boise, I recommend to see one clip from Only Fools and Horses, if you agree, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, if, I think that this is the, the, the first uh, time that Boise appears in Only Fools and Horses. Oh, yes, yes. Episode 2. Yeah, okay. okay. Oh yes, this came in with a Chesterfield and a gross of electric toothbrushes and a part shop on a van and plus. Still, uh, <laughs> clean it up a bit, couple of new tyres. Yeah, yeah. New engine, new <laughs> body, and you got a nice little motor. It's not 8,000 miles on the clock, that genuine. <laughs> Shut up, Rodney. Be honest, Boise. I mean, seriously. <laughs> it's a bit of a pig. <laughs> But what do you want for 50 quid? Ah, well, now you're talking. <laughs> I'll take that. What do you want, chick? Or shall I give it to you in the old readies? <laughs> you wouldn't know, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, sir. No, no, it's handsome, though, isn't it, eh? Yeah. You know what? It's only you type Jaguars and Sebastian Coe to make me feel proud to be British these days. Yeah, I know what you mean, Boise. 
Why haven't you got this up at the front? Ooh, silver sail, though, my old mate. Matter of fact, I'm looking for a place to hide it for a week. I bought it as a birthday present. I'm dead scared the wife's gonna see it and suss it all out. Spoil a surprise. Spoil everything, Rodney. It's a birthday present for my bit on the side. <laughs> <laughs> His bit on the side. His bit... Oh, never mind, Boise. So long since Rodney had a bit on the side, he didn't know they'd moved it. <laughs> I just, I, I just can't stop watching the photo, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, this is, this is the first car that Boise uh, sold yeah, in. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? It's yeah. a brilliant one. I like it a lot. It had a clean ashtray. Really? That's, that was Never used? Point. No, never used. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I can assume. Yeah. Uh, what was your feeling when they called you to, to, to go to this show? Did you have a feeling that this will be so big because it was broadcasted in 50, 50 countries, uh, 30 years, uh, Boise became a legend? Uh, uh, here you still are not. Uh, you still don't. We well, mean this at the time when, when, when I started. Yeah, when they called. No you. idea. No idea it was going to be so big. No, it was just. In those days, I was doing a, a lot of parts um, like that in, uh, in a lot of shows. You know, that's what you did. And I thought it was funny, but I had no idea it would be so big. As, it... as, as far as I heard, Mr. Sullivan, who was the screenwriter, mm. he didn't have the idea that Boise will last so long and be so important in the. No, no, no. I, nobody said anything. I, I did that. Did that show just sort of one day one day's work and uh, nobody said anything at all and I had no idea the series was even going to go on and it's lucky it was lucky actually there was a strike um, technician strike at the BBC and they couldn't make any more programs and uh, so they repeated that show because it, it didn't have a lot of audience when it started but they really? repeated it a different time and the figures went up because people had talked about it so much so that that's when they decided to do a second series so did you like the suits that you were wearing there yeah I wore that quite a lot the cream suit, you know? <laughs> oh, the business, huh? <laughs> and, and tell me, you're from Bristol. You were born in Bristol in London, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, so is it connected with Peckham? And do you know anything about the Peckham <laughs> at all when you started the show? Peckham, we hardly did any, any filming in Peckham at all uh, because um, when, the, uh, when, we, when the news got out that we were going to film, the whole, the whole people would come out, all the people would come out, and the police couldn't... Uh, couldn't handle the, the crowds because they had to close the roads and then everybody got very frustrated because they couldn't get through Peckham. So they said, I'm sorry, we love your show, but you've got to move. So when we I went was, to the West Country. When I was in London, I, I went to Peckham, you know, and they, yeah. they, they just left me there and they say, this is Peckham. And I was like, very nice taxi. And I ran away. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, such yeah, a yeah. nice neighborhood. And, uh, it's not great, no. Well, we spoke yesterday about it. How it came that uh, you make a show about a specific area in London and people love it in Serbia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you have a theory that this is because of the characters, that everybody can recognize those characters that you have in Only Fools and Horses. Yes, I think so. John Sullivan, the writer, came from South London. Um, so Peckham is sort of southeast London. And he knew all these people, and he grew up with them um, when he was a kid. And uh, he, just, he just had this ability to remember stories and remember characters. And he always said about Boise that he knew some... When I did that first episode, he, uh, he, he said he knew someone just like that. Um, it was some guy, Gordon, I think. Yeah. Yes, I got it from somebody in a pub that I knew in a pub, and uh, he was um, a strange character. He'd come in, and he was always on his own. And he had this... He would, sta he would stand like this. And he would talk about practically anything. A complete nonsense for hours and hours and hours. And he had this pedantic way of talking like that to make his points. And of course, everyone in the pub would go... <laughs> yeah. But we, you couldn't help listening to him. And he had such a thick skin, he would just keep on talking. And, and he had a real self-inflated uh, idea of his own importance, you know. Um, he, said, uh, he said so much. And I said to him one day, I said, Gordon, what do you do for a living, this man of mystery? He said, well, to be fair with you, I can't really talk about it because a lot of it is top secret. <laughs> but safe to say, it is in the electronics area. So we all thought, ah, what is this? Rocket fuel, fighter pilots, you know, communication, something. I mean, there's something really important here. Maybe he's a spy, you know? 
It turned out it was a travelling salesman selling tape recorders and radios to everybody. So it was the electronics, yeah? It was electronics, yeah, but yeah. I mean, th this was it. He said he said so far as a great... But except him... Except him, did you know, did you know any other guy like Boise? Somebody Not who really, no, but I was always or... interested in someone who believed that they were more, more important than they were. But, 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 but you were a real estate agent, yeah? I was a estate agent, yes. yes. Yeah. I started off, everybody put me off being uh, an actor. You know, they said, uh, they said, you will be out of work a lot. I thought, that's very attractive. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to do too much work, you know? Oh, yeah, nice theory. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but uh, they said, oh, it's very difficult and you're, and you're not made of the right stuff. And uh, so I became an estate agent, or I joined an estate agent's firm, but I was so bored, I did no work, I impersonated everybody else in it. And I made up, I made up stories about properties and sold imaginary properties. And eventually they said, thank you very much, goodbye, go and do something else. So, <laughs> so that was it. So in that Okay, but yeah. about the boys he left. Mm -hmm. which was very characteristic and everybody spoke about it. Yeah. It didn't come from a man, it came from a woman. Yes, it did, yeah. Can you tell it, us the story? Yes, actually, um, it was a complete accident um, because if you look at the early episodes, Boise didn't laugh like that at yeah, all. Yeah, the first um, five or six Boise didn't laugh No, 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 it doesn't know. Yeah. I mean, I did it just, I just did it um, when we were rehearsing, uh, just for a laugh. <laughs> a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I went. <laughs> and, uh, and everybody laughed and uh, said, you must do that again, you must keep it in. So I thought, what did I just do? I couldn't remember what I'd just done. And this, <laughs> this laugh actually, yes, you're right, came from uh, a woman. If you can imagine that laugh from a woman. And it's another woman I met in the same pub and she had this, this laugh like a machine gun. And it, so, so it was really... <laughs> and did you, oh, that hurts. That really hurt, you know. But, um, but I always remembered it. So, uh, so that's it. All actors are thieves. They remember things about people and they store them away and then they use them in. But uh, did you ever think to change the pub? Maybe. Hmm? Did you Did you think about changing yeah, the I pub? Yeah, I went to another pub after that. Because there is so a lot of strange people, people there. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, tell me then. You're now building the character. Yeah. So you have the character. You have the laugh. And uh, in some moments, you are stealing the show from the people. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the atmosphere at the set? Uh, was the other guys good with you? How they see you? Were your friends? Uh, what is yeah, today? Yeah. What happens we, today we, with you? We guys? all got on well as a company, you know, and uh, you form a little family any any show you do. And uh, we were so proud of it. And it, particularly when we knew it meant so much to people, um, and and it got so big because I never thought it would go further than London because. The language is very London, a lot of the rhyming slang and so on. And it was amazing when we were getting letters from Scotland, Wales, all sorts of places. And then, and now, of course, we've become truly international. Do you yeah, know, which is, yeah. So it, it just shows you the quality of the writing and those characters. And everybody knows those people. Tell me, at the beginning of the show, there was some audition or you got it just like this? No, I had, uh, I had already done... Um, an episode of a previous series written by the same writer. Uh, this time it was a policeman. I played a lot of policemen in those days. And, uh, and that's where I really tried to use this character that I'd met in the pub. And, uh, and the writer, John Sullivan, came to me and said, I really like that character. And so what, I'm what, what try was and the use name it. of that show? It was called Citizen Smith. I, I think we have the clip if you... Yeah? Yeah, I, let's see. You're a very clever man, aren't you? Where'd you get this from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be. <laughs> Maybe it's not oh, that one. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes. Uh, we're police officers. Oh, please come in, please. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chance, I believe you were in the vicinity of the High Street this morning when a robbery was taking place. Yes. I wonder if you could uh, help us out at all. Hey, for instance, you saw any men running away with grey stockings over their head. Maybe we better go through and uh, sit down. Oh, uh, no, sorry, lady in there, not in respectable condition. Oh, I think I'll be the best judge of that, if you don't mind, sir. Have you got the money in here? <laughs> You're expecting someone else. Yeah. OK, it's not the one, not the one, eh? This no, is Chance in a Million. No, it's not the same one. Yeah. It's not the same this one. This is Chance in a Million, but, but you don't have a moustache here. No, no. 
No, I can I can act without a moustache as well. Are you know. sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfectly well. You or? should try it. You should. You're going to shave that you off. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I did 125 episodes without moustache. <laughs> the last five are the best, you know. Is this, this really the first time you've done a show with it? Yeah. No, this is not the first time. I'm, I'm doing it for five days, and everybody asks me why, why, why. Why? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Because I didn't, I didn't want to tell them about you. you know? What about your wife? Does she say why, why, why? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, me, me and my wife, it's a why, kind why, of... Why, 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 I'm going to leave you if you grow that moustache? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think she already left me, you know? <laughs> but she's there, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah she, she didn't know where else to go, I suppose. Oh. You know? Actually, she does, you know? Oh, she does? Yeah. 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 But I think... Uh, nice. Nice. No. Okay. Does she grow moustache, too? Yeah. No, no, only on Sundays. Oh, only Sunday. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, let's <laughs> she will kill me because of <laughs> oh yeah okay tell me is there in only fools and horses is there any character that you liked uh, more than yours that you're thinking like why i'm not okay not rodney but why i'm not uh, okay not not trigger but uh, <laughs> o o o why i'm not denzel maybe denzel yeah i i quite i like denzel's character very much you know he's a haunted haunted guy you know he's slightly paranoid about it about you know, every time Del Boy gets him involved in something, it goes wrong, it goes cra crazy, yeah. you know. Um, I've always liked the Denzel character quite a lot, yeah. And uh, what do you think about uh, Del Boy on Rodney? What do I think about him? Yeah. About the characters in the, in the show, not about the actors. I, what do I, well, as a, as a character, I think he, uh, he's beneath me. <laughs> I am superior to him, you know. That's why I sit in the pub, so I can feel superior to Del Boy. He's, he's ducking and diving, and uh, he's always grubbing about in the market. He's yes. a bit, bit low caste. Yeah, you're very you stable, know? you know, and you have some Yes, some I have money, dignity. you see. I have money and superiority. And I live in a nice big house with a gravel in and out drive and a delicious wife yeah. and the lovely Marlene. So how's Marlene? How is Marlene? She... Uh, I think she's very well. I think she's on a cruise ship at the moment. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. is very lucky for us all because can she's you, a long way can away. Can you say, Marlene, that everybody tells hi to Yes. Yeah, okay. Come along, Marlene. Get your coat. We're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you think that the end of uh, Only Fools and Horses with uh, Del Boy and Rodney becoming a millionaires, is it uh, justice? Is it a good end? Well, I, there was a lot of discussion about this, how it should end. You know, the, uh, whether they should finish up. The full circle was they should finish up back with nothing, where they started, you know. And I always thought that was the right way to end it. But there was a lot of discussion, and about five years went by before uh, they did some more, because the last thing you saw them down the yellow brick road... Yeah. ..and, uh, and they would become millionaires. Every, everyone was very happy. Um, even Boise was quite happy. You remember in the pub? <laughs> And he came in, and uh, Denzel started the round of applause, and Boise just didn't join in until the very last moment, reluctantly. Yeah. Well done, Del yeah, Boy. Well you know, Del Boy, he yeah. was quite sick about it. So, as a character, I, th I was glad that he lost it all again. <laughs> <laughs> I told you he'd never, he'd never keep it. You know. And, but uh, the guys are good. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, but I think it was. I don't know. What, what do you think? Do you think it was right that he should lose it all again? Because yeah. otherwise, you say. That's the answer. Money is the answer to everything, you know. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's right. After being Boise in yeah. only Fools and Horses, uh, you started the show with Marlene. Yeah. Green Green Grass. Yes. Uh, how did you feel in this show? Well, it was strange to, uh, you know, to follow. Uh, of course, it was very flattering that uh, Boise and Marlene were asked to do their own series, and uh, spin-offs not not don't have a good history in English television at all, so everyone was a bit fearful. Um, but so we said, yeah, we were very excited, and then suddenly in the next five minutes we were terrified, because how do you follow a show that's as big as that, you know? Um, but luckily the audience came with us, and uh, I, think, I think it became a very different sort of show, and the, and the characters changed quite a bit. And, uh, and it ran for four series, and was supposed to do a fifth, um, but the BBC suddenly changed their minds and decided we were too expensive. In Green, in green, green Grass, your son didn't come out very... No, no. Right. No, that's right. Well, there was all this discussion on was he Boyce's real son? Because he looked a bit like Del Boy. <laughs> you think? You know, it's a, it's a bit strange. Yeah, but the Del Boy was uh, sending kisses to Marlene all the yes, time. Yes, yes, he know. had. Well, Actually, he was it, claiming that he had something with Marlene. Yeah, yeah. As he said, when Marlene was first mentioned, all the lads remember Marlene. <laughs> Do you remember Boyce went, what are they talking about? Hey? What are you talking about? 
But obviously she had a history. She was a good time girl, I think. Good time girl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is uh, similar between you and the guy from the show is that you also left London and you live in the countryside. Yeah. Is it good? Is it better than living in London? How do you feel now? Well, <clears throat> I, got to a, I got to sort of a certain age, you know, and uh, I'd lived in London for almost 40 years. And um, it, uh, life had changed, you know. London changed. I changed, obviously. And... Uh, I think it's a young, very much a young person's place, you know. Um, but I got to a stage where uh, I felt I needed something else in my life, you know. And uh, and I I found something else, which was my wife. <laughs> oh yeah, we can say hello to her. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah. You know, they they asked me when they came over here, uh, when I came over she, here. She looked at me like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 sorry, really. If I made if I made some mess, I'm sorry. <laughs> They asked a question of me when I came here. They say, when I'm traveling on the airplane to come here, they say, have you got anything sharp or dangerous? I say, yes, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For the service, eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she, won't, she won't thank me for that. No, no. But, uh, but we, uh, we always had a, a, a feeling for history. We were fascinated by history. And, um, and we wanted to create a garden. We're great gardeners. We wanted some space. We wanted somebody to look after, to do up, you know, to... Uh, and we found this piece of history, and by an extraordinary coincidence, uh, my wife had an ancestral uh, connection to it. We, we went to see this place, this very old place, 800 years old, um, and it was part of an old monastery, and uh, we discovered that uh, my wife's ancestors had lived there after the dissolution of the monasteries for over 200 years. So the, the monasteries were dissolved in uh, 1500, and uh, that family were the first people to live there after that, and she had What's no that? idea about it. So oh, yeah. And it now like she's living there, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So do, do, do you feel something? Is it, you know, like... Uh... Yeah, it's very personal. It's a very personal place, you know. So Carol lives in the big house, and I live in the stable at the back. <laughs> <laughs> you live in the garden, huh? Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me, there is... A, there is a... There's a very nice story. In the, uh, in the past, um, you had the opportunity to be on the casting for the movie with the Beatles. Oh, and yeah, you yeah. went uh, to interview with yeah. uh, John Lennon. Yes, so I did. Would you please, please tell the story? Yes, I mean, you can imagine this was, uh, I guess, about 1967, 68, something like that, a long time ago. The Beatles were at the height of their uh, fame, really. Um, and uh, they couldn't find a particular character for their, um, their show, The Magical Mystery Tour. I don't know if anybody's seen that or, uh, or uh, heard it or so on, but um, they couldn't find anyone. And my, my agent just had an idea that I might get on with them, so she sent me to, uh, to meet them. I thought, my God, I'm going to meet the Beatles. I don't believe it, you know. And uh, I went up there. It was a Sunday. And, um, and 33 of them were there. George Harrison was not there, but John, Ringo and Paul were there. And I was, like, quite nervous, you know, but I, uh, I was very excited, of course. And um, I don't know, I was feeling very cheeky that day, you know, and, uh, and John Lennon said... Um, he said, well, uh, he said, I'm sorry George isn't here. And I said, oh, yeah, I thought there were four of you, I said. <laughs> so where is he? And John Lennon said... Yeah, well, George is actually just a cardboard cutout. We sacked him years ago, you know. <laughs> I said, oh, he's a real nowhere man. <laughs> just like that. And he said, hey, Paul, this guy's a genius. He can make up song titles. You know, yeah. that became <laughs> the title of one of their songs. And did, did he ask you what band you particularly Yeah, like? yeah, he said, uh, he said, by the way, have you got a favourite Beatles song? And I said, I just thought for a moment, and I thought... I said, I prefer the Rolling Stones. <laughs> <laughs> which, was, <clears throat> which was true, but, you know, if you've ever said something you regret, you wish you could pick the words up and put them back in your mouth and not say them, you know, this was a moment. It happens to me very often. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, um, but it, he, uh, he said after that, there was a long pause, and then John Lennon said, he said, I think you're right. I prefer them sometimes, too. <laughs> <laughs> really? And so we, we had a sort of humour in common, and he said, oh, come and do the show. And I was so excited, you can imagine. But the only trouble was I was unavailable. I was doing another show, and they wouldn't release me. 
cup, so I never got to meet them. I never got to work with them. Special thing that I want to talk about is the convention about Only Fools and Horses. It's a sort of event that happens all around the world. You organize it, and uh, we spoke yesterday that uh, I have a big wish, and uh, this TV station have a big wish, uh, to try to organize it here in Serbia. And I would just like you to explain what exactly means, because actually, as far as I understood, except uh, Delboy and Rodney, all the other characters are coming in the same place. You can buy the pictures, you can buy the pillows, you get the autograms. Yeah. Uh, There's get... lots of memorabilia, lots of uh, things about the show. T-shirts, pictures, lots and lots of uh, stuff. You can even buy sort of salt and pepper pots. Boise and Trigger as salt and pepper pots. How would you like that on your table, you know? All those sort of things. Um, and, and quite a few of the cast uh, would come. And it just happens in a big space and uh, we sit in a row and we sign things and we chat to people. We have our photographs taken and you can buy all the memorabilia and celebrate the show, you know. And it happens in, uh, in England uh, every year and over 2,000 people will come. Um, can, can you ask them in, in yes. your language to see if they in, think in it's language. a good idea? In Swahili or in Serbian? Uh, no, I think this time... Try Australian. OK. Would you people come to see it? Something that is very nice <laughs> and <laughs> let's go in that area. Dali viste ovi, dali viste gosli. I did right, yeah? Okay. I, I never met an Australian guy. No, no, never? Never. I hope you never will. I hope I will never meet an Australian <laughs> guy. Dali viste vi došli nešto što je kao sajam mučki, gde dođu svi glumci, što ne gledate tako? Živ sam, sve okej. Gde dođu ovi, gde dođu glumci iz mučki i možete se upoznati sa njima, potpisujete Oni vam potpisuju slike, popričate malo. Delboj i Rodni ne dođu, ali dođu njihovi imitatori koji su potpuno isti. Dođe Uncle Albert koji je također potpuno isti kao u seriji. A sve ostalo su originalni glomci. Da li biste došli na tako nešto? O, gdje ste i jes? Da li biste platili kartu da dođete na tako nešto? I forgot to ask them if they would pay a ticket to this. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Mm. Tricky, yes. Yeah, yes, there is a, We have an entrepreneurial guy in England who, uh, who sets up this convention. He's a really good guy, but uh, he's a bit like Del Boy himself, you know. He sells a lot of stuff and he, he wants to get the right price and he's always thinking of things. And uh, So I think it would be a great okay, adventure but, for us, you know, to come out here. Yeah, but imagine you can, you can buy a pillow you can buy a jacket with the boys' face. And then every day you can buy a You can buy a pillow with You wake up in the morning and go, Yeah! Oh, boys' face. Yeah, it could be nice. It could be interesting, I think. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the mission for us is to try to organize this... Uh, yeah, try this event that. here in Serbia. Yeah. We'll keep in touch and I will give my best and this TV station will give our best to try to do it. And for the end, uh, we were thinking like if Boise would still work and uh, if Boise would still sell used cars, yeah. which car he will sell to which uh, celebrity? Oh, yeah. So if you agree, we can watch it. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Sure. <coughs> okay, this is for El Elton John. Uh, <laughs> what is that? This is, this is the car for Danny DeVito. <laughs> <coughs> Maybe I can use this one as well, you know? Uh, this oh. is the car for, what do you think? Marlene. Not Marlene, this is for Pamela Anderson. <laughs> And what do you think about this? Oh, I don't know. Someone with a lot of children. Brad Pitt and Ange Angelina Jolie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is for them. Yeah, yeah. And this one goes to Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> this is amazing. And the last one. What do you think about this? <laughs> to who? Ooh, it's for what do you think, Carol? Katie Price? <laughs> no, no, Pippa Middleton. Eh? It's for Pippa Middleton. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, John, for the end. Uh, first of all, I really hope that Serbian publishers will uh, use the opportunity and publish these books, translate yeah. them to Serbian and publish them. I will help about that. 
Uh, this was a really huge honor for me and for the entire team that is doing this show because we are the great fans of Only Fools and Horses and uh, from all the characters inside we really and truly loved Boise and uh, after this show we still love Boise and we love John Chalish. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Come again, okay? Yeah. Please. Sada imamo I forgot to give you the present. <laughs> this is a watch for you. No, for me? Yeah. No. Yeah, just is to this remember. Is this a real thing? It's a real thing, yeah. Can I, can I just say, uh, I have no idea what to expect when I came here to Belgrade, but I've just had the most wonderful time, really. My wife and I have really enjoyed it. We've met some fantastic people and really been looked after well. And actually, we can't wait to come back and uh, find out some more about it. So uh, thank you, thank you so much. We really hope you will come again very soon. Thank you, thank you. This time, eh? Yes, keep it as a, a, a memory <laughs> on a crazy TV host. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. John. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, on, I don't know, Nick, I have some obituary over the years.